the level of anxiety that's there is um, pretty indescribable. It's insurmountable. It about broke us. Violet is the oldest of the twins. She's two minutes older than her sister. We found out while I was still pregnant with the twins that there were some problems. Specifically, Violet has a Tessier cleft. The facial bones didn't fully come together. It's not ever something that you want to hear. It's kind of uncharted territory for most cranial facial surgeons something that they see in medical school, but the hands-on application is, um, it's just not there. This is where we are from. Oh, I did a crooked. Oh, well, why don't you finish it? That's a long ways, Violet. Violet, can you say hi? Hi. Oh, cutie bud, Daddy, what are you doing? She's gonna get shy. Yeah. Violet's screening facial condition is, is quite rare. If you play basketball, for example, you, you practice shooting free throws every day, you know, but this is not something that you can practice every day. You know, Violet has a Tessier cleft. Dr. Mira was trained with Dr. Tessier. We were coming here because they'd done it before, but we didn't know anything about the 3D printing at that point. Normally, you can't see certain aspects of the skeleton with skin covering and muscle covering the area. 3D printing allows you to see areas and actually to simulate surgery in a way that's never been possible before. The printer lays this resin down, moving up through the skull thousands and thousands and thousands of layers with acrylic being added in very specific spots. So when I'm looking at a complex craniofacial condition like this, I'm able to turn this over and look at various areas where I might need to make special cuts in the bone. So you can see here a model where we actually went to the lab, made the cuts that we had anticipated making. and it taught us a lot about where the cuts should be made or where areas of interference are. So for example, the eyes started out quite far from each other. We wanted to move them together and just in the process of doing this, we noticed that there might be, for example, some contact areas where bone was contacting prematurely. The nice thing about doing that in this model is you can do it again versus in the past, the first time you would have been making those cuts is in the patient. Having that, it was a double-edged sword. Um, on one hand, I walked away with a lot more information. Now, how, how is this going to affect her vision with moving the eye muscles? We're going to be moving things so much that I'm sure we'll need our ophthalmology colleagues to adjust the eyes. There was more trepidation. And we're going to be moving those muscles and the eyes themselves quite a good distance. OK. Um, oh. We didn't grasp the, the magnitude of it until we could see the amount of cuts that had to be done. Even in the operating room, there were several times where I would have one of the residents or one of the fellows bring the model over just for me to take a look at. Yep, uh, it's, it's back, yeah, it's the back of the maxillary sinus and the pterygoids. Yep. Him coming out of surgery with the, the skull model that had already been cut, um, the visual of that, we knew it was a big movement. 
Yeah. Um, we knew it was one of the biggest that they'd ever done. But until that second, I don't think any of us grasped how big. So what we did is we moved these together just like this, like this. So that now everything comes oh together. my goodness, that's amazing. That was what kind of clicked with how big of an ordeal she'd gone through. Is there still a space in her forehead where there's no Oh, where there's no, no we closed that. Okay. Close that. How long before she can eat or suck on the bottle or without her? Here comes. <laughs> Here comes. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure that I'm not gonna like fall apart if it doesn't go the way I'm hoping it'll go. But well, we've been to a lot, so I mean, I think you can do I've been here a long time. <laughs> Come on, in. I kind of feel like I'm ready to throw up. I'm all nervous. Don't be nervous. Everything's gonna be fine. So on the right there is. Uh, is before, so you can see the position of the eyes fairly mm -hmm. wide set and the skull defect and the, the aperture for the nasal bones, and obviously this is after. That's oh. huge. Yeah. I think as she gets a little closer to first grade, we could talk about whether we need to touch up the nose okay. or whether there's anything we can do to bring the soft tissue together a little bit. She's doing great. Just fantastic. So everything, everything looks like it should? Yep, you can go home. Yay, Violet, we can go home. She was the first one they, they'd got to test drive it with, which is kind of cool to be able to say later on, like, hey, you were the guinea pig for this whole thing. Say bye bye, Violet. Come say bye bye. All right, we are out. Bottom. Yes. Thank you, guys.